And now to get on to the detailing, which is kind of exciting because it means that this thing is getting very close to being done. So first thing I'm putting on, it's uh, this uh, sand dome right here. The bottom was kind of poorly shaped and I had to do some rework on this to make it fit and look good. And I had to drill the hole in the body in kind of an interesting shape. But now that fits on top right where it needs to go. And next up, working my way back, is the steam dome. Nothing too complicated here, just a bit of smoothing around the edges. Except for some reason, you have to drill a really, really big hole to fit this in place. For people who were working on this and were starting to get discouraged, Arbor Models did make sure to add a quick note for them to remind them that they were, in fact, having fun building their Arbor Models kit. Getting more of the main detail castings on. And another problem part I found was this pipe right here. It's a single cast piece, but they made it about a quarter of an inch too long, so it was just extending all the way off the front of the boiler there, completely away from where it was supposed to be. So cut that down, glued it together to look like one piece again, and put it in place, and it looks a lot better than it did before. I've got most of the larger castings on there now. For some of these, the drilling points were so poorly marked that um, the only way I could get them into the right place was to look at photos of the real engine and then uh, go based off of that. It is coming together though, as you can see, just bit by bit. While I was working on all the detail, I noticed that the back of the engine had sunk down somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch, just from the weight of the body and the flexibility of the metal. So. I bent that back into shape and added this little brace here, which rests on top of the bushing that I made earlier for the um, worm shaft here. That'll give it some extra central support and hopefully prevent any bending or sagging in the future. I've also started adding the suspension details. Since the original pilot was missing, I got this kit from Precision Scale. This is uh, brass, as you can see, much higher quality than the original Arbor models. I soldered the large parts together and then just used glue and baking soda for the smaller ones. It's holding together nicely. Made that little platform there for the headlight, and I drilled a hole in case I decide to add a light bulb to it. So the challenge now is fitting this to the chassis because this is designed differently, so it's going to fit differently. I filed down the end of the frame so that it can fit the pilot better. And this should get it into the correct position, or at least close enough to the correct position once it's in place. And to hold that on, I'm just going to use epoxy. So the pilot's now mounted. And for a moment I thought I was going to have some problems with the front steps. Because, as you can see here, this is way too long to fit. So I started looking through some photos of the real ones and of other models and found out that these top and bottom steps were never actually on there. So I clipped those off from one of them, tested it out, and it is now a perfect fit inside of there. Making a decent amount of progress with the piping and railings on the left side. It's taking quite a bit of work, a lot more than I expected to finish these parts, partly due to the lack of good clear photos of some of these areas. So like for the where the sanding lines and pipes are ending down here, some of it basically amounts to guessing just because I can't find any really clear photos of that area. And then for some other interesting parts, the large pipe here, you can see in photos that it's mounted by small rings along certain areas of the boiler and firebox. So to make those, I'm bending this flat steel wire into small eyelets. And that's holding it in place and helps it to look a bit more realistic. Steel wire is working well for straighter parts like the handrails and some of these long pipes. For the sanding lines, I'm going to redo them with copper wire, especially since I visited a prototype and found out that I didn't get some of them shaped right anyway. So now I'll move on to doing that. The detail parts on the steam engine are all finished now. As you can see in a couple areas, I ran out of the 
arbor steel wire, so I had to switch to brass wire for a couple things. And then for the sand lines here, I decided to use copper wire instead since it's a lot easier to bend. And I made those sand lines come all the way down and then meet at some pieces of steel wire. And I added more steel wire at the bottom to create the sanding lines underneath. So um, that's something that I didn't even see brass models do before just because of the complexity of the piping, but I think it'll make it look that much better to have it that way. Got railings all around the lift bar here. And then around the other side. It's pretty much the same thing. Mostly steel parts made from the original arbor wire. A few brass pieces and copper pieces here and there. But I think this looks pretty full and well detailed overall and should turn out pretty nice once it's all painted. The only thing I haven't made yet is the window frame here. Well, the window frames on each side. I couldn't quite figure out how to do that with uh, my plastic sheet or um, uh, metal wire pieces very cleanly. So I did recently get a 3D printer and I'm gonna try 3D printing those window frames and sanding them smooth. So if it all turns out as well as I hope, they should look pretty good in there. All right, I got a quick 3D model of the window put together. Now let's see how this thing prints. This should only take a couple minutes to finish. It looks like they've started out pretty clean. And done already. I think those turned out pretty well. Just a little clean up around the edges and they should be perfect. Now all that's left to detail is the tender. And this should go a lot quicker because all it really needs is a grab rail at each corner, a couple of pieces of wire up here. Uh, there's supposed to be an air tank under here, I believe. And then just a um, ladder in back and a couple uh, stirrup steps. So yeah, those, those should only take me a little bit longer and then I can finally move on to painting and finishing. And there's the detailed tender. It took more work than I was expecting, especially those uh, uh, ladders around the bottom. These were made from forming some flat steel wire that was provided with the kit. And I had to remake each of those at least twice before they were shaped correctly. And then there was making each of the individual steps and getting them to fit and stick in place. But I think it turned out pretty well overall. Just happened to have a couple um, Kale scale parts left from an old Belzer kit, so that was convenient. So now I can finally get on to painting. And here it is in the most disassembled state it's been in in about five years now, I guess. I've got to be very careful with how I handle a lot of these parts because they are extremely fragile. Don't want to break or lose any of these details or other parts. So now it's time to clean the thing up for painting. And to do that, I'll be using a bit of soft scrub with a toothbrush and some warm to hot water. So I've already got that shaken up. I'll just uh, put a bit onto the brush there. I've got the strainer in the sink to make sure no parts will wash down by accident in case they break off. Just to start up a gentle flow there. And let's start with the tender. Just uh, wipe that down a bit. A little water on the toothbrush. And start scrubbing. Making sure to be extra gentle around small details. And there's why I wanted the strainer. So, uh, fortunately, there was no major damage because I was holding it pretty low in the sink. So I'll continue cleaning these parts. And once they are dry, I'll glue them back together, epoxy them back together, whatever's needed, and then get on to painting. So yeah, it looks like it was just a few parts that came off. So that'll be easy enough to, easy enough to fix. 
So I have everything just laid out on a paper towel right now. I'll let that dry overnight and then uh, yeah, I can get back to work tomorrow. I'll probably start by painting the chassis and the tender and then I'll get to the boiler last. So while I work on repairing the other parts, I'll go ahead and paint the chassis and wheels so I can at least get this much started. I'm just airbrushing that with some Scale Coat 2 Black. And that's looking pretty good so far. Getting closer. The tender's taking a lot more paint than expected just because of the roughness of the metal, so I think I'm on about my fourth coat now. Engine's going a bit better, so just lightly airbrushing that on, light coat at a time, until it all looks nice and smooth. Now some details like the trucks, I'm actually brush painting instead of um, airbrushing. And for that, I'm still using the um, thinned airbrush paint, which actually works pretty well for brushing. It usually needs about two coats to really look good. I've already done two coats on here. But because it's thin, it spreads out nicely and doesn't really leave any brush marks behind. Airbrushing is all done. I've got those 3D printed windows in place, painted yellow. I think they look pretty good. And I'm working on doing the other touch-up paint and trim paint around it. Touch-up paint is almost done, so now I'm starting on decals wherever I can. I've got the Chesapeake and Ohio logos on the tender there. Those just need some setting solution after the water dries out. And I've also been brushing dull coat onto some of these parts, like the trucks here, which I couldn't spray safely. And the brush on dull coat. This is actually the first time I've used this stuff, not in the spray can, and it works very well with a paintbrush. It goes on nice and smooth, has a good finish, so I'm definitely happy with that. Don't know why I never picked up a bottle before. But yeah, now I just need to get to the rest of the decals and the rest of the touch-up, then give it that final coat. All right, so now I'm airbrushing the dull coat onto the chassis and the wheels. And I decided not to even thin it since it's already pretty watery stuff. It goes through my airbrush easily. And I've seen what lacquer thinner does to scale coat paint, so I figured this would be safest. Put that on there real quick. This stuff dries ex extremely fast too. You can see almost immediate results. You should see just a bit of that shine in there, how that's turned into more of a dull finish. Looks very good. So we'll get on to that with the rest of it. And there is the reassembled chassis, all touched up and cleaned up. And it still works. Which I'm very happy about. Got the rest of the decals on the engine and setting with the solution. And the decal set didn't include the little Chesapeake and Ohio letters that go on the sand dome there, but the rest of the major stuff is there, so it'll still look good. And I've also got the tender clear coated and reassembled, and I think it turned out very well. And finally, we're down to the last piece to be clear coated. won't take long at all. It dries fast and then I'll be able to reassemble it. And before reassembling I decided to put in one final touch of some window glass using this thin plastic sheet here. And I think that'll improve it that much more. Tightening in the final screw. And that is it. And with that, and for over five years of work, the Arbor Models 284 is finally, finally finished.
really has been a journey getting this thing finished. There's still little issues here and there to work out. And I knew this was going to be a lot of work going in. It ended up being even more than expected. But I am happy with how this thing has turned out. And at this point though, I'm just relieved. I don't have to work on any more projects involving Arbor models. Uh, yeah.